welcome back to Odonet. So today I want to do a quick little video about uh, testing for your JavaScript applications and TDD. And like most developers, I know I should be doing more uh, test-driven development. Uh, I try, but I don't always do as much as I probably should. There's some pretty hardcore TDD people out there, and I guess it works for a lot of people. I have a tough time just getting things up front. I'm a big prototyper and fix later kind of thing, but no, I, I have been. I've really been kind of trying to focus and force myself to write more tests up front before I'm actually writing functional code to do anything. Uh, not completely successful at all times, but I really am trying. One of the things I've been focusing on a lot recently, getting more familiar with and how to use as a tool is code coverage, right? So I've done some code coverage uh, stuff in the past, and it's always just kind of been something that I look at and go, okay, I've got 60% code coverage. That's good enough for me. Or maybe I want to hit 75% or something. It's like, okay, it's fine. No big deal. So, but I've really been doing a little bit, uh, a lot more of it recently. So I want to talk a bit about code coverage today and some of the options you have when you're writing your tests. So I use intern for most of my testing. I like intern a lot. It works great with the ArcGIS JavaScript API. It's what's used for building the API. Um, it's pretty nice because it's kind of a whole uh, suite built into it. It's got all the tooling to write your TDD. It's got multiple different kinds of test runners you could use. It's got all the code coverage in, built in. It's got functional testing, which is kind of neat. So if I want to test out what happens when I click on an uh, element on my page, make sure that maybe it updated the class to another part of my page kind of thing or some sort of action happened, I can always test that, make sure that behavior is the same every time. I can run a local Selenium server, so it'll spin up uh, Chrome for me, and it'll run all my tests in Chrome, and then give me a nice little readout at the end. All right, so everything's kind of built into it. I have done some work recently using Jest, uh, which is also really nice, and it's also got uh, some code coverage built in. And Jest is really nice. One thing I do have to say I really like about Jest is the way that mocks work inside of Jest. And let's uh, real quick try and get over here, uh, look at the uh, mock functions in here and how you do mocking, right? So uh, I really like mocks work inside of Jest. I think it's a, probably my favorite feature of Jest alone. And I kind of wish I could do um, the whole mocks folder alongside your uh, source code to do all my mocking for every um, test, every application I have. It'd be really cool if it worked with intern or even uh, Things like Carm, maybe it does work. Carm, I haven't tried it, but I've just been using Jest on its own to do uh, some other stuff. So I think that's really cool. Uh, it's as an instead of using like Synon or Test Double or something like that, I can just use these mocking tools built into Jest to create mocks from application, only fo focus and care about what I do. Although on the other hand, you do have to write these mocks, and it's almost like writing a little a uh, bunch of tiny little pieces of code to fake your application. But I'm getting off track. I was, I was talking about test coverage, but Jest Je does come with test coverage. And at the end of the day, what do all these um, frameworks use for the test coverage? They use Istanbul, right? So I, I wasn't completely familiar with Istanbul. It was a little foreign to me at first. I just knew uh, that I would run my test and I'd see a nice little printout on my screen telling me, hey, you're covered 75% coverage on this file and you're missing coverage on these lines, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, but I didn't really know what drove all that. And it's this Istanbul, right? So Istanbul runs everything. It gets all this different coverage. I learned a lot more about using Istanbul this past couple of weeks than I had known in the past because I, I just wanted to learn more about how to get my coverage to uh, you know, do what I wanted to do. Okay, so what, what it'll do is it's going to go ahead and it's going to uh, output your test coverage for you for your files and tell you where you're missing uh, coverage for testing your code. If you're writing, uh, one thing though, is that if you're writing your applications in TypeScript, like I am most of the time, then it, by default, it's only gonna tell you what the output JavaScript is missing code coverage on. And that means I have to go look at the output JavaScript and I need to know um, exactly, let me just run this real quick to so see what I'm talking about. I kind of have to uh, think, I have to look at the, sor the source JavaScript, the output JavaScript, and figure out where that output JavaScript is actually being, um, where it's coming from in my TypeScript code and kind of figure out what did I not test here and there, blah, 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 to kind of figure out. And it's, it's kind of a headache, 
uh, to do, right? So here's the test report that I get. And you can see here it's telling me that uh, you know I've got uh, coverage here, 58% on main JS. And on, uh, source JS has only got 61% coverage. Users JS only has 52. But I, I mean, I know I tested more than that. There's no way that's right, right? So this is the output JavaScript, but it's not the source TypeScript, right? So I've got these uh, things in here, uh, users TS, and it's not even a uh, big file. So I don't know what, how I how can I possibly not have all the coverage. But anyway, okay, so. What you want to do if you're doing TypeScript and you want to do your test coverage, you want to use Remap Istanbul. So the guys over at SitePin uh, put Remap Istanbul together so it would remap your uh, output JavaScript code to the source TypeScript code using the source maps, which is pretty clever, right? So it's pretty neat. So what, you, what do you get in that case? So let's tell you here. So I'm going to run npm run test coverage so now it's going to run my reporter again and i get a whole bunch of cool stuff there's a whole lot's going to happen here uh, you can see chrome just popped up and it's randomly uh, testing all my code uh, that's using the selenium driver so there's the first output that you normally get with the javascript code but then i go ahead and now i'm going to run remap istanbul to do its thing and here's the output up oh, my npm's out of date i'll fix it later i don't care so here we go now I've got my source TypeScript files telling me where things are going. So here we go. So users.ts, I have 100% coverage. Where if you come back over here, users.js is only 52%. So ignore the first one, but when you use Remap Istanbul, you want to do this one here. So, okay, so how do you do all that stuff? So let me show you here. So I, I'm, I'm relying on NPM scripts to do everything. I've stopped using Gulp or Grunt to do stuff. I just use NPM scripts from now on to do everything I want to do. So what I've got here is I've got a um, I've got my test script here, which is going to run the NPM. Uh, it's going to run intern serve to my uh, config file. And that if you haven't seen that before, I'm actually run that. I'm pretty sure I've shown this in the past, but I'll run it real quick just so you can see. So I'm going to take this. Copy that. I'll bring it up over here. It's happening. Things are happening. It's running its code. So there we go. So this is my test report for intern. Uh, no, it's pretty straightforward. Gives me info and all my stuff. But you know, expand all, collapse all. It tells me how many sweeps I had, tests I had, duration, failed, success rate 100%. You want to see this 100%. You know, you don't want failures going through. If you have failing tests, and you know they're going to fail, then just skip them. Don't have them jack up your entire uh, test report here. All right, so let's stop that. But now what I want to do is I'm running, I want to run this test coverage. So what we do with test coverage? I'm going to run it's coverage start now. So for coverage start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run intern, but I'm going to run it with the web driver. And I'm going to use the config that I had before. And I'm going to use a pretty reporter because I want the output in my console as it's running that's what the pretty does uh, it's going to give me the so i know as it runs the test is passed 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 now although you can't really see it because the browser covers everything up when it's running and i think there's some like uh, not like but the, um, some synchronous stuff happening there because everything just kind of pops up at once it's okay it's fine so then the next thing i'm going to do is after i've run that npm start and I'm going to go and run this report. I'm using Istanbul, using JSON coverage. And then when that's done, I'm going to run uh, coverage after script. So let's go to coverage after. For coverage after, I'm going to run the HTML me. And I'm going to go ahead and use Istanbul to create an HTML page of my, excuse me, of my test coverage. So I get a nice little HTML report, which I'll show you in a moment. After I do that, then I'm going to run the uh, remap. I'll coverage remap and if I look at coverage remap I'm going to run the remap Istanbul to go ahead and do all my coverage and it's going to create this remapped um, JSON file here of my coverage and I'm going to delete the final one because I don't want to pollute my um, repo with all of these so I'm going to delete that one then I'm going to run the coverage text when I run coverage text that's just going to use an Istanbul command to give me the report text that's what gives me 
this nice little output here. This alone, I'll tell you this right now. This alone, because I don't know Istanbul, I don't know how the reports work, I don't know the command line tools, don't know the API very well. This took me like a full day to figure out what to do. I was like, I had no idea how to turn this JSON file into this little output that I could see on the screen. I, I tried using NYC, which is another uh, code coverage uh, assistant tool. It's, kind of, it's a wrapper for Istanbul. That's a little easier to use. I tried using that, couldn't figure it out. I tried using all kinds of weird commands, couldn't figure it out. This is all I needed. Report as text. I didn't know this. I, I assumed because I had a JSON file, I had to use report JSON and just create another JSON file. But no, it's report text. Now I'll give you this little bit here. Important. Istanbul report text. Oh, I, I, now I know it's so, I feel so dumb. But okay, so we've got that. And let's go ahead and look at my coverage report real quick. All right, so what Istanbul is going to do when I have it generate this HTML report? All right, so if we come over here, I have my coverage HTML script. I'm running remap Istanbul. I'm giving it the coverage report that Istanbul creates. And I'm going to have it output to an HTML or type HTML and then output HTML report. This is the folder it's going to output to, and the type is going to be, I want an HTML report. This is really cool because it's something you can like share with your teams in the meeting or something. Um, you know, uh, I wouldn't check, well, yeah, I guess you could check it in to your repo if you wanted to, but it's a really useful tool because I can see here uh, real quickly where I've got, uh, what my code coverage looks like. So here I can see that for the whole app, I am just at 60%, which is, isn't great. I need more testing here. But app sources, I can see that everything under here, I'm at 93%, which is cool. Serializers, I'm at 100%. Uh, stores, I'm at 92%. Widgets, low, almost 60%. Almost 90 for this uh, uh, widget here. And I got like, this one here really is zero, the support. Uh, I, just, I think I just got lucky by having some uh, other tests, test some functionality in here. So what we do here is, now you can open this up. You go to app sources, for example, click on that. And I can see here in users TS where I have all my coverage. And if I go to source TS here, I can see in red where I'm missing some coverage. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Right, wrong button. There we go. So this is pretty cool. You can see here that I have not, I don't have a test that checks for uh, this response here. If you no, know, that happens. Um, I don't have it. What's the yellow mean? Damn it. I don't, I don't know what the colors mean. I think... Uh, Green means I'm good. Um, red means I'm bad. I think yellow means you're you're iffy, right? If someone knows, please tell me. I, I don't know. I'm going off the cuff here, guys. I'm not a pro at this uh, test coverage stuff, what these colors mean. But that's my guess, right? So I'm kind of missing this line here. I'm probably getting this one. So that means I could probably improve this test, but uh, I could be pretty comfortable without it. So let's find one where this one here is bad one. Ooh, this authentication one. All right, so there's not a whole lot happening in here. Uh, it's got just a few things, but I haven't written a test at all for this one. I know I have it. So now I know, okay, I'm being stupid. Let me go in here and me write a test for this and make sure that's uh, I got that covered. Uh, a lot of times, see, it's, it says it's 42% coverage, but that's only because um, I actually initialize this class inside of another test that I'm using, but I never use it, which means that um, I'm, I've tested, technically, I guess I've tested these and that the class can be initialized. You know, it's not going to break, but I have not tested anything else with it. So I need to do that, um, test that stuff. So that's pretty cool. That's about it. That's what I wanted to cover, uh, how you can use test coverage as a tool to help you write your own code. Um, you know, you don't have to get 100% here. I mean, if you get 100%, you're probably getting lucky. Uh, a good threshold, I believe, I've heard is like uh, 75 to 80%. Um, it's a good goal to strive for. What you really want to avoid is seeing these reds. And these reds are just telling you that you probably haven't put a whole lot of effort into writing your test. And if you're going to do it, you know, go all the way, get some tests done for it. Don't half-ass it and just write half the test for your application. Okay, so I mean, at least put a little effort in if you're going to get started for it, All right? So let me delete this. I don't want that in there. 
So that's it. That's test coverage. That's how you could use uh, Istanbul and more importantly, remap Istanbul to get the code coverage reports for your source TypeScript files in your application. Thank you.